All right. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, happy New Week. Uh, we are here in the middle of the night from Dubai. We have our amazing author, Humaira Nassim, um, who has gotten up super, super early and um, is ready to rock and roll with us for our Monday morning uh, live. So thank you so much for making the time, Humaira, um, you know, this early in the middle of the night, actually, mm -hmm. over there. It's, it's it's my pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. I'll give uh, I'll give um my audience a little bit a bit of a background in terms of how we met. Um, I think it was probably coming up to a couple of years. Um, it was through my partnership with Mustafa in Dubai and in the Middle East. And you and I um got together and I helped you unpack your book and sort of get it all pulled together in order for you to proceed through the whole process and um. Then you obviously published it with Mustafa's help and um, over there. And now your your author, show us your book. Um, you know, uh -huh. Humera's book called uh, Rediscover. Look at that beautiful cover. But what more importantly, uh -huh. I'll give everyone a little bit of a background in terms of who you are, and then we'll get stuck oh. into this uh, intriguing topic about I love being naked is the title of the live this morning and we'll talk about some of um, Humera's expertise. So let me give you a, a brief description um, introduction. So Humera Nassim is a NLP master coach. She's a speaker now an author of her book Rediscover the Roadmap to Inner Peace, Balance and Fulfillment in Your Relationship with Life. So she's a passionate truth seeker whose curiosity led her to explore different facets of life from a fresh lens. In this quest, she has spent many years grounding herself while at the same time traveling around the world, meeting people of different cultures. She believes nature um, to be the true source of inspiration from where she extracts most of her life lessons. So she's now a successful relationship and wellness coach who guides others to self-discovery and personal growth. So today, Humera, we're talking about, um, you know, the topic of I love being naked. So can you give us um, give us a little bit of a background story of wh what led you on this path um, to writing the book, of course, and um, and doing what you do now? Um, so uh, thank you, uh, Nat, for the wonderful introduction. Um, yeah, writing a book was something that was uh, written in my uh, genetic code maybe because I was always a book reader there was a dream that maybe later some uh, at some point of time I would be writing a book but uh, thanks to you guys uh, I attended your author workshop and that was the time when you, you know which ignited the spark that you know why not now and uh, uh, and within like a uh, like within a year, then I signed uh, uh, signed writing a book with you guys, and then uh, it was it was a wonderful journey. Um, basically, uh, my first medium of uh, you know communication is through words and through writing. So it it was meant uh, book was meant to come sooner or later. Yeah, but tell me a little bit more about you, like you know you know, the topic of the book, what led you mm -hmm. to the point of, um, of writing, you know, the, the actual topic of how you help people? Was there something in your life, a shift in your, you know, beliefs and, you know, mm -hmm. a, you, know you know, usually I say there's a moment, you know, shit hits the fan or a crisis that occurs in our lives that pushes us in a new direction. And especially when people become coaches, it's because they've needed to solve something for themselves before, they can help other people. What was that? Uh, for you? I think uh, it was not a moment, but it was a series of events that uh, led me into this journey. As uh, I was from the IT background, an engineer, a computer systems engineer. So it was a major uh, shift from engineering to psychology mm -hmm. as, uh, as, my, uh, as my passion to understand human behaviors. And since, uh, since a little girl, I was always intrigued into human nature, uh, into feelings, into behaviors and things like that. So from uh i believe the when i started writing the book it came from different steps and then uh there was a lot of knowledge uh that i 
that was accumulated in my mind and it had to come out before I could uh, uh, further, uh, you know, put something more inside. So, uh, and most of the writing, whatever I've written in the book uh, is um, like introspection, through introspection, observing, uh, uh, observing the environment, observing my own self. And it's like a personal journey that I've, that I've written in this book. So you've had a passion for human behavior and, you know, kind of understanding yourself more and more. And that's what you have put in inside the book. Okay, well, then let's talk about then you talk about self acceptance and overcoming uh, your ideal, you know, the self <laughs> and perfectionism and all that kind of stuff. So talk to me a little bit about that. Give us some hot tips about how we can be more self accepting. Okay, so I, I think the self is such a deep, uh, you know, uh, thing that, you know, uh, one layer after another, you find, you, you tend to find another aspect of yourself. It's, it's, it's a deep ocean. And uh, the moment you step into personal transformation, you get to understand so many things on different levels that, uh, and then the acceptance comes in of how to accept yourself because the when you start the journey of personal transformation it is mostly the self that you are observing is through the lens of the society what people think who you are rather than what you yourself are so feeling those layers one after another to find who your true what your true self is it's 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 not an easy journey but it's well uh, it's worth uh, taking one yeah i know i um when i started on my personal development journey 11 years ago i kind of thought oh what you know it, it was really hard and i go i wish i didn't you know like in the matrix mm -hmm. there's the red and the blue pill and you know and you've taken the one that's going to open up this world of other mm -hmm. the truth if you like and, um, mm -hmm. and you kind of go, oh, I wish I was just ignorant. I stayed here. But then once you keep going, doesn't it like, you know, it's actually so much better. Exactly. Yeah. There are times where, and I said, what the heck, why did I even, you know, write the book or, you know, I went into this, uh, went this deep because, you know, as a truth seeker, if you are pursuing truth, a truth is not always sweet. <laughs> it's, uh, you know. It, it, it is bitter sometimes it's scary sometimes so facing all those challenges um, is uh, not is not an easy job mm, yeah absolutely and when you work with your clients like you know what are the biggest things that they come in to you for uh, you know what are their biggest challenges when they start working with you as a coach I think the biggest challenge is, uh, you know, uncovering that uh, conditioning that they have been told. And uh, that because my niche is in self-discovery, so uh, my clients are usually who, know, who want to know more about themselves. And it comes from a slight issue. And then, you know, when the layers are uh, uncovered, they start shedding their layers of what they think uh, that they need to do. and they, uh, and it and it starts from they want they want their their life is empty or they want a connection or uh, things are not working out for them. But then when they dig deeper into their life and reflect, there are other uh, things that are that are part of the puzzle. So uh, one after the other, uh, we dig into those uh, areas and 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 at times it's a very emotional journey for people. And everybody has a unique journey. So uh, mostly, mostly my clients are uh, women who are seeking uh, uh, redirection in their lives. Yeah, so they're moving, they want to transition into something different, whether it's a career or relationships and, um, mm -hmm. or, or health or whatever it is. Yeah, absolutely. And so it, what do you find um, is that if someone's feeling stuck right now, and they're listening to this interview and this live, you know, what are the first steps for someone to do? Like, because I mean, you obviously had the interest in it. I had like a kind of like a life shifting moment that pushed me into personal transformation and personal development. What about those people who are feeling stuck and in pain? What, what would you advise them to do first up? I think the first step uh, comes through introspection. So they need to silence the social noise and really sit with themselves. 
to understand who they are and uh, and uh, it won't be at a deep level of first but uh, but at least it would uh, it would be a first step towards uh, you know uncovering those conditioning about themselves so it's just sitting with yourself silencing the social noise around and you know just asking yourself um uncomfortable questions mm. what are some of those questions have you got a couple um yeah so uh, two are my bad questions that that led me to the journey myself and uh, yeah. those are why why uh, why we feel the way we feel in such in any situation what 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 is the you know why do we feel a certain way and why do we act the way we do so yes. i'm seemingly they are very you know basic questions but uh, when you start introspecting or reflecting over them it it opens it opens you know a vast uh, it 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 just opens the horizon yeah absolutely because then once you ask that question you want to kind of find out well if uh, so where is this coming from so why do i feel the way that i feel where is this coming from you know what does that you know um what can i learn from this and all that kind of stuff so that you you're starting to take responsibility i think a lot of this um with the way i have perceived it and studied it is about ultimate personal responsibility and um and kind of figuring out yeah it may have come from parenting you know like from our parents upbringing conditioning as you say the social um i mean this world of social media and so much um, um media overall um can mm -hmm. really really play a big part on what we believe and what we value and things like that rather than choosing for ourselves exactly and most of our beliefs are formed in the childhood so yeah. breaking those uh, barriers or be breaking those beliefs of the culture it's 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 not easy and as you said that you know once you uh, start reflecting upon these questions it, the the victim uh, uh, mindset that you are uh, that you were in you just have to take the personal responsibility for everything and in order to get unstuck from the situation otherwise you can spend years uh, victimizing yourself because and this way because my environment is that way uh, you you need to take some start from somewhere mm. yeah and i find a lot of people um find it so much easier to place blame on others or situations what how do you coach around that because i you know sometimes i meet um you know people who are really haven't done any work on themselves and it's everyone else's fault and you know it's because this happened and that happened you know and all that kind of stuff what what do you say to um you know in those situations? that's a very good question that's a very good question and um, and obviously as human beings you know we try to shift blame because we want to feel good but uh, the truth is that uh, life uh, gives you mirrors and you know if you're able, if if your country is not um moving forward it's not progressive or your politicians are not good one approach is that you keep blaming the politicians or you take it as a mirror and see what is in your life it's reflecting and how it is you know um uh, it is related to you and how you can transform and improve yourself what whatever you are seeing in um, uh, in the reflection whatever Uh, yeah. in whatever um issues that you are facing and you know these bits and pieces of uh uh reflection that you see and if you're fortunate enough to see your whole uh reflection at once it's um sometimes it's scary and sometimes you know it's charismatic that you know how you have transformed as a person but there are some shadows in your life that you need to address yeah and that are hiding your true potential or your true self and once you are eye to eye with your reflection you 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 will continue putting blame all around you know you and so that's from where i think the first step is uh, being true to yourself like you know self uh, loving yourself lo loving all the parts of you and uh, some are good some are not so good some are 
your survival mechanisms, uh, how you navigate it through your life. So, you know, uh, this what you see in the mirror, if you are not um, true to yourself, you will just see those parts that are being validated by the society. And that's, that's, you, that's what you carry about yourself. So self-love, uh, earlier I used to think was to celebrate only those parts. And it, it, kind, it kind of felt being narcissistic. Oh, uh, I, I used to do, uh, you know, uh, think that way. But then uh, I realized that, you know, it's not only those parts that you need to love or uh, talk about, or are these, there are the shadows yep. that you are carrying and you're not addressing. These are the parts that have brought you this way. You should be, you should also be proud of them. And once you, once you accept them as part of you, then comes the transformation, then comes acceptance, and then comes uh, how to evolve or how to grow through them. Yeah. Because we all have a shadow, dark and light, you know, in life, exactly. positive and negative, you know, and all that sort of stuff. There's a comment here from someone uh, watching this live because we can't see the comments here, but I've got them here on my computer. Leslie says, some people have no awareness and you just um, have to let that go as we're only responsible for our own behavior, thoughts, feelings and actions. We cannot do someone else's inventory for them. And that is true. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, um, everyone has to do the work on their own. Um, I believe you can, sure. there's no easy uh, way, um, you know, just like no one can make you successful or, you know, you got to get up and do the work. You can have mentors on the journey. You can have people who tweak and give you advice and all that, but ultimately you have to be the one that takes the actions. And that's in every area of life, I believe, you know, we're, uh, together, uh, we're talking about self-acceptance and, and, you know, transformation and doing the work and becoming um, you know, owning um, your dark and your light, if you like. Um, so, yeah. Sure that. Hmm. So, tell me about vulnerability. Okay. So, in today's world, you know, people struggle to actually, um, I guess, it, it portray themselves as, you know, someone who's vulnerable. Um, and you talk about it's important to embrace it. Tell me a little bit more about that. I think uh, vulnerability at some level is is your strength. If you are vulnerable enough to accept your dark side and to learn from it and not even learn from it, you can guide others through that. Yeah. Uh, for, for example, how vulner vulnerability as a mother can come. For example, if I know my dark side, obviously it's not hidden. It's not hidden. People know that. People can see that. So your children can see that. And you are not accepting it, but there are there, they are learning the behaviors, and they and it is it is it is a part of them as well. So if you're not vulnerable enough to accept yourself, you are not going to accept the child who has that part of you. So yeah. you will have that agitation and annoyance with even with your child because you haven't accepted yourself or your own self so vulnerability is a strength wherein you sit with your child and you uh, mention your mistake that i am a human and you know uh, we always grow we always evolve unless we do we are not open in our conversations um, uh, with our children or even with our peers and friends around we will have that uh, perfect uh, we'll try to maintain that uh, level of perfection or the perfect image that we want to carry but that's not true that's that's just a part of us but it's not true it's not the whole yeah. uh, isn't it what do you say yeah absolutely I think we need to you know share um, and be okay and completely understand what you know, what our strengths are and what our weaknesses are and where we can show vulnerability and say, I was wrong, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. uh, or I made this mistake and now I'm just going to fix it or how I'm going to go about it. And and I think also being solution focused and be able to like, uh, you know, that quote, be the change you want to see in the world. I think that was the one that really resonated with me on the personal development journey early on. So I, I'll go, okay, I need to be the change that I want to see the world. So if I'm not happy as a, partner as a mother as a whatever what do I need to do within myself rather than expecting others to change right exactly I think this is 
Oh, I lost you. Uh, uh, how many doors you knock uh, for uh, the environment to get good, the country to get good, the relationships to get good. It, it, it won't happen unless you go within and seek that within yourself. Yeah. And, right. and it is so contagious or it is so um, amplifying once you change yourself, the surroundings, they are, you know, the, the transition or the change is quite visible once you have worked on your own self. You start to see the world differently, right? It looks different all of a sudden. Oh, you can't hear me? <laughs> I can't hear you. You Matt? I um I lost you, but then I got you back. And now I'm not sure if it's happened at your end. Uh oh goodness me. <laughs> the audio changed. Uh hang on, hang on a second. I think uh once can you still, second, can you I hear can't me? hear you. The audio changed halfway. At your end. I lost you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I can hear you now. You're back. <laughs> because I lost you back. for about 15 seconds. And then. Yeah, and then I think. I, is, was it some headset that tried to connect? <laughs> nah. All good. He can hear me now? Yeah, now I can hear you. So let's move on to, let's move into like, what can people learn from your book? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you guys where you can get the book as well. Like, um, and I'm happy for you to share a website, but uh, I've, um, uh, on Amazon, this is the book, um, Rediscover, the Roadmap to Inner Peace, Balance and Fulfillment in Your Relationship with Life. So this is Humera's book with, that you can look up in your local Amazon store and, um, and grab a copy. Um, but tell me a little bit more what's inside, like, you know, what can people get, you know, is it the deeper conversations behind everything we've been discussing this morning? Uh, yeah, so it's, it's basically about polarities and yeah. it's how to find, nav navigate your life between two extremes wherein uh, you are uh, not absolutely stuck at one side. Uh, in that, I give an example of a pendulum, which, you know, in order to uh, have that balance or that equilibrium, you need to keep uh, moving, you need to keep swinging rather than getting stuck at one side. So at one side, there might be um, a giver and the other side is a taker. So if you're stuck at any of the side, your life will, won't be in balance. Or let's say at one side is patience and the other side is uh, uh, retaliation. So if you are in, in, if you're not swinging because the context matters, you know, if there is a situation where, where it asks you to, you know, fight back, you cannot fly out from that situation. But if you are stuck into a certain belief that, you know, we need to be a uh, patient or we need to be a giver, or, so we would just, we would live our life out of context. Yeah. So that's, that's what uh, the main message of the book is that you need to keep swinging uh, to and fro on, until your heart stops beating. So till you have life here on this planet, you need to, you know, you need to, Keep revisiting yourself. Ask yourself what, what choices you can take between these two polarities and what's the best one. Or, I mean, not the best one, but the better one. It's yeah. always the superlatives that, you know, uh, make all the problems. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. So how do you work with people? Like, they're like, And what do you hope, like, you know, the book to do for you? Like, you know, so do you coach people one-to-one? -one? Do you have group programs? What sort of stuff do you do? Yeah. So uh, I do one-to-one -one coaching and uh, I do workshops as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, uh, my book is also a representation of the kind of coaching I do because that's uh, all on self-acceptance, self-discovery and, uh, and the emotional blocks that people have. Uh, because I think the core of uh, human beings are the emotions. And if uh, they are... Uh, if they are neglected or if they are not addressed then all the other issues follow so at the core there are emotions if they are uh, if they are not addressed then all other issues you are you cannot do uh, you cannot address other issues unless you haven't addressed this core issue yeah beautiful 
amazing. So um, um, your workshops are they um, are they online or are they um, face to face in Dubai? In Dubai, uh, because of the COVID, everything was on online. But uh, now that uh, things are opening, so I'm looking forward to more uh, in per or uh, in person workshops. Amazing. So yeah, good on you. I love it. I love it. I'm so happy to see everything that you've you've now created and you're continuing to create um, with um, with your book. How did you find the process of writing it? I mean, of course, I wasn't involved in the absolute the whole process we were like halfway and then obviously uh, got helped by Mustafa to publish it to finish the publishing journey but how did you find like you know the unpacking and pulling it all together I think I loved it because um, uh, I was thinking to writing a book since long time but that's um, how you are you know there's a, this blueprint and this framework that you have to stick to that that defines the boundaries that you don't have to you know uh, go here and and there and I remember uh, coaching with you um, it, it just streamlined everything whatever I, I had in mind in those two hours I remember I, I think we cover it, it just I everything that was in my mind came out on paper and that was wonderful I mean, unpacking the chapters was the uh, first thing that, uh, you know, if, if I hadn't done that, it wouldn't have been structured or organized the way it turned out to. Yeah, well, I'm very happy that you followed the recipe and I know you want to write more books. So, um, you know, keep going and the book is beautiful and I absolutely love your story and your mission to help more people, I guess, awaken, if you like um mm -hmm. and um you know dream uh, live their ideal lives do you have your own website where people can visit and look up some more information on what you do yeah it is humeranasim.com oh just your name Humera Nassim yeah. we're gonna put it in the comments guys and of course i showed you obviously online where you can get the book um on amazon as well and because i know there's people uh, that will watch this all over the world so um probably that's the, the most central location we can send everyone to so wonderful really appreciate you getting up so middle of the night for you um as i said it was 3 a.m in dubai right now guys so mm -hmm. um i mean it's probably you know mm -hmm. in a state of oh where am i you know but mm -hmm. <laughs> have a couple of hours of sleep um, before your Monday, the new week begins. Oh, well, actually, I remember Dubai, the new week begins on a Sunday. So a really, Sunday. the week has already begun. For us, it's only just starting here today. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I wish you every success and hopefully we can do another interview maybe in a year's time and, and see where you've, you've come to um, with, mm -hmm. with your tools and your strategies and your book. Thanks, Thanks for having me, Nat. It, it was a one. All right. Have a good one. Mm -hmm. Good night. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Take care. Pleasure. Bye -bye.